Well, hello stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper and I am actually pre-recording this video. Um, I've decided to play it safe and do a pre-recording and see how it goes. It's asking an awful lot of this laptop to um, film directly to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. A bunch of stuff goes wrong. Sometimes the internet qu can't quite support it. And sometimes uh, the, the laptop starts overheating and you hear the sound of a rushing wind and then we'll think it's Pentecost. So I thought I would pre-record and I hope that you enjoy it. And don't worry, there will be live videos. I will go on YouTube live occasionally and on Facebook, of course. So I hope you join me there. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to click that little bell icon because if you do that, then you will, um, then you can subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything and be sure to give me a thumbs up because not that I need the um, affirmation, although I'm not going to lie, it's always nice and you guys are wonderful for that, but it also tells YouTube that people are interacting and when YouTube thinks that I'm making good material, then it will broadcast it to more people and that's the goal. Okay, so um, together we are going to grow an awesome community. Just like we did on Facebook, we're going to do it on YouTube. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear um, what you think, what you like, maybe what you don't like, what you would like to see. Um, because this isn't just about me. It's about you too. So I hope that you enjoy. I'm going to show you two cards today using the Nature's Harvest stamp set. And then we'll see what we go from there. And I'm going to have to improvise a little bit because I'm in the Netherlands and I wasn't able to take my entire stamp room with me. So I can probably relate to some of you in that you just don't have everything yet. Okay, so let's get started. And here we go. So here is this super cute card and it is done in polished pink. And, oh yeah, I'm not quite in the image. There we go. There. I have my better half kind of here helping me. And honestly, we owe him a huge applause because you have no idea what happens behind the scenes. But my goodness, we had hours of struggling with Manicam because we were having trouble with the sound. But anyway, I don't need to bore you with it. Gerard fixed it. And so here I am. And this is good. At least you get a picture in picture because that wasn't going to happen. Now, the one thing that I'm going to be do doing differently is you'll see that this, the flower, look at the gloss on that flower. Isn't it gorgeous? And the way I did that is with our uh, shimmery crystal effects. That did not end up in the suitcase, so I have ordered it. It is arriving later this week. So I will show you a different way to add a little bit of bling to your flowers, but it's not going to look like this. So if you don't have the shimmery crystal effects yet, you're going to want to get it. And in my YouTube video at the bottom, you can click on see more and then there's a list of supplies that I use. And if you live in Canada, you can click on that list and you can shop with me. And that, of course, would make my day. OK, um, I don't know. I think I don't think that at Amazon, when you buy from Amazon, I don't think there's a whole cheering section that says, oh, we got another order. But trust me, when you order from your Stampin' Up! demonstrator and we get an, a notification that says online order notification, we get super excited. So be, I will definitely be in contact with you if you order for me. So let's get started. The card base is polished pink. And if you got the, the card in the mail, if you got the class, then you have all these things. So we're going to start with the flower. I have already die cut it. So I stamped it on white in memento black. And here it is. Here's the stamp set. And then I don't know if I put it back or not. I did, yes. So here's the die. So I stamped it and cut it out with this die. So now we're going to use our blends to color it. So I'm going to move this aside. I don't want to lose all my pieces. And we're going to do a little bit of coloring. And I think I'll zoom in for you a little bit so that you can see better. Right there. There we go. So polished pink. I like to start with the dark. So I'm taking my dark polished pink and I'm just going a little bit here where I want it to be dark. And you know, play with your blends. Don't get freaked out about how they're going to look. You know, it can change. It doesn't matter. It's coloring after all, and it's very personal. So you don't have to worry about how everyone else does it. I'm taking the light and I'm going over top of the dark to blend it through. If the blending part scares you a little bit, you can just do one color. You don't have to use the two together. 
as you play with them, you'll start getting more comfortable. But the nice thing about them is that they're a wonderful coloring tool. They don't leave lines. They color beautifully. And, um, and they're all different. Even though all our blends come in a light and a dark, some of them are a little bit more different. The light is more light. The dark is darker. Sometimes they even look like they're different shades, but they all look beautiful. So there we have it. And then for the top, I'm using soft suede. So a little bit, and I'm just going to go dark on one side here. It does look really dark, doesn't it? And then I'm going to go over it with the light. And I'm going to use my brush tip. And I'm just dragging that dark color around. And that way it looks like the sun shining from this side. And the shadows on the left side. There. Looks quite lovely, doesn't it? And I, I, I grabbed my cinnamon cider thinking maybe I wanted to add a little bit of a different shade in there. And that looks kind of cool too, doesn't it? So you don't have to use the colors just together. You can throw in an extra color if you want. So now we've got Old Olive for the stems and the leaves. Now normally I would, I would color first and then cut. It's easier. But because I didn't want to cut on film, on camera, to get the, the, the die cutting machine. Maybe I'll get comfortable with that. That's my challenge. And then I'm just going to... Yeah, this feels like it's... It is the dark. Goodness, I thought I was using the light. I need the light. Um, I thought, man, this is looking dark. And it was. See here, you can really see the difference between the dark and the light. And I'm just going to go over it. I'm going to use the fine tip. Sometimes the brush tip is just a little bit too wide so for greater precision you want to use the small tip there they're just really pretty this set is to me iconically fall although technically these flowers i call them cone flowers you can also call them echinacea or if you paint if you color them in yellows it's a rudbeckia daisy or a black-eyed Susan. There's so many different names for this beautiful flower. Whether you use the Latin name or the regular name. And then there's even more subversions of it. But it is a very nice flower. The bees love it. And of course we all, we don't like bee stings, but we do love bees. They pollinate and stuff. In lots of parts of the world, the bee population is down. Okay, now we're going to finish, and I see, I don't know where my little pokey tool is. I'm going to use my scissors. I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but take a peek. This little piece didn't come out. There. Now it's good. All right, we're going to go in with a little bit more polished pink. I'm a little bit concerned that this video is going to be so long. So what I might do is do the video in two steps. I'm going to do the first video after the first card. I'm going to stop it so that it doesn't take as long to upload. Um, I don't know if I've told you this story before, but in this part of Holland, it's called Vestland, and it's this little area near the sea. It's right by um, Hoek van Holland, which is where the ferries go to England, and there's a lot of greenhouses here. So because there's so many greenhouses and everything is so tightly built together, they haven't been able to put in fiber optics. There's just too much stuff already happening under the ground. And so this area in Holland is one of the worst for internet. Of course, go figure. Um, so that's unfortunate. And so I have to deal with that. And so that's why the uploading could get interesting as well. Now, if it doesn't upload on time to be up for 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, then I will just do a quick live video to let you guys know that because communication is everything. And when you're used to, you know, me coming on at that time, it's not nice if you tune in and I'm not there. So there we go. I'm just going to do some light at the bottom here. And now this little top part, a little bit of dark soft suede again on this side. Very cute. And then light soft suede. I'll pull it through. There. And now is a great time to invest in stamping supplies because it's still celebration time. This is the very first 
celebration. I'm going to use the color lifter for a minute. It's the first celebration that Stampin' Up! has done in the summertime. So till the end of September, you can get a free item with every $60 you spend. And there's... Oh, that's not good. There. Gerard's iPhone is attached to this laptop. So sorry about that, that call coming in. I'm hoping he got it on his phone before I hung up on the computer. Um, yeah, that's just one of these things. Um, we're sharing devices. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I have a piece of very vanilla. I'm going to tell you what the dimensions are. It is four and, no, it's five inches by three and three quarters, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to ink up our flowers and we're going to do one full strength and the rest of them are going to be lighter in a different angles different heights so this is the full strength one so give it a one two three four five press and then I'm going to do a lighter one here and then an even lighter one here and even lighter over here and then we're going to go one that's kind of half strength or even lighter we'll see so we're going to ink it up one more time and then I'm going to stamp off on my grid paper give it a nice firm 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 stamp and then I you know what I want to stamp off even again once more and then we'll do one in here there. There we go. And now we're going to put it on a black mat. And the black mat is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And it just you'll just see how it pops by doing that. Isn't that great? I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. It's just a bit too close now. There. All right. So I'm going to use my stamp and seal. And I find that if I go all the way to the end and then pivot, then it just keeps going. That's the easiest way. And the thing is to not press too hard with this. Now, I'm going to just, I like to line up the top two corners. There. And now it's going to go on the polished pink. These pieces are for the inside. There we go. I'm going to put the lid down, lid on my memento. I hadn't done that. So this is going to go just flat on here, I believe. Yep. You could pop it up too with dimensionals. So now I have to advance it a little bit with my thumb. Down we go to the corner. Pivot. 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 There we go. And now make sure that your fold is on the left-hand side. You don't want a card opening the wrong way. Trust me, I have done that. I'm just eyeballing it and when it looks good I'm going down and now I want to decide I want this to be like so and we're going to pop that up with little mini dimensionals and I'm using the minis because then they fit on the stem as well so there we go today it's a beautiful day here in Holland um, it's been sunny, and I think it's probably about 18 degrees. Fall, this is my favorite time of year. I absolutely love it. It's not so hot. It's not too cold. The flowers are still nice outside. It's just, yeah, I, it's great. I was reading this morning in a magazine that it's so important to sometimes just do absolutely nothing. Even if it's, she said, seven minutes a day. That's not very much, but it can really recharge your batteries. So I'm going to put this here. And now I need to do something with this little banner. A little banner. I've already cut it out. This is an old olive. And I could do good luck on here, but I think it might be too big. I chose to do thank you. And I think... I'm just trying to look. 
that banner, I believe, I will look at, let you know in the notes because the banner did not come from this stamp set. I think the banner came from World of Good, no, Tasteful Labels. I'll look it up for you. But regardless, we're going to take the thank you. And that's good luck. See, good luck is just a bit too big. Good luck is not going to fit. We're going to do thank you. And the reason I'm choosing thank you is because I like to send thank you cards to people who order for me. And it's nice to get a card with a set that you might not have. And so tap, tap, tap. Hover over. Oh, it moved a little bit. We'll see how that went. Well, that's not bad. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. If you really wanted to, you could turn it over, but then the stitching isn't quite as nice. So I'm just going to leave it like that. It's okay. We need to embrace our imperfections. I learned that a couple weeks ago with Stampin' Up, and it was like 80% is good enough. So we're so used to thinking, oh, you've got to give it your all. It's got to be 100%. But you know what? If it's 100%, then maybe it won't happen, right? It's better to do 80% and give a card and get it finished than do wait till, till you get it perfect and then it might never happen. So this is going to go flat. And the reason for that is then it really lets the flowers pop and shine and take the, here, the center stage. I like the light gray flowers in the background because it looks like a sketchbook a little bit. And now we're just going to add a B. And the B, you know, I'm tempted to put the B right over here and not on this side. Let me show you the other card. And I'll tell you why. So this is the original card and it has the bee sitting on a flower. I want my bee flying because there's a tiny little smudge there. So the bee is going to have a different home. I'm just looking for my glue dots. So your glue dots come in a box like this. And you take the whole thing out, you peel back the layer and there's the glue dot. And then you take your bee and shove it on the glue dot, give it a nice firm press. And then the glue dot is stuck on the back of your bee. And, oh, I shouldn't have let him fall. I want him to be over top of my smudge. There we go. Nice. So now we're going to finish off the inside of the card. And I think I got a smudge on that one too. Okay. So now we have a piece of vanilla again. And we're going to ink up our flower. I could have done a smaller flower as well. I could have chosen this one. I kind of like the big one. I want that theme to carry through. And in the inside, I'm just going to leave it black and white. I'm not going to color. And I want my image to go off just a little bit. That adds interest. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then I'm not going to, let me see. A reminder to never forget how much you mean to me and so many others. I'm not going to put that in there because I don't know if it's just going to, I shouldn't say just, if this card is going to a customer who ordered for me, then I don't know, I can't in all honesty say um, that this person means a lot to a whole lot of other people. I mean, most likely he or she does, but it would be a little presumptuous. I think the person would be thinking like, oh, wow, that's a little bit over the top. So I'm not going to do that. You don't always have to have a saying in the inside of your card. Sometimes it's more meaningful to, um, to just have a handwritten note. There. And now that's going to go on the inside of our card. There we go. And then I'm going to stop the video and I will do a second one with the next card. Just just so that I don't want to make it so that this video is too large to upload. But it is really nice to finish off the inside of the card, isn't it? There we go. I will um, take a peek and find out where this um, die came from, and I'll share that with you. Okay, so that's it for this first card. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to hit that little bell icon underneath the video on YouTube. And um, if you want to take it one step further, please share with your friends. Um, let me know in the comments if you did that. I'd like to send happy mail. So that's it for today. Have a super day. Bye.